Good evening, everyone. I hope all is well. My name is Shantae, and I'm here with a week in review of my analysis. You can catch me on Twitter at the same name, I am Shantizi, on this platform, same name, or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Shantae Berry. So I am here with a week in review, and all I know is um, it was a strange week. Like, it was so crazy. Like, America was, like, on edge. Like, literally on edge. Hello. So, I'm just going to come to you with some COVID numbers. I'm not going to be long because it's kind of late. And normally, I try not to be this late on my Instagram live, but I had a busy day. I did an eight-hour day, so I'm tired. So, global confirmed cases, according to the John Hopkins website, we are at 88 million let me refresh this page to make sure it could. Okay, so we're at 88 million. Yes, it was crazy. 88 million, 821,629. That's around the world. That's in 191 countries, I believe. Um, global death toll is at 1,911,637. Now, U.S. confirmed cases are as follows. U.S. confirmed cases are 21,857,293. So again, the U.S. confirmed cases is 21,857,293. And as of today, we had over 300,000 new infections of COVID-19 in this country. Nowhere else but here. So that's big. Um, the U.S. death toll is at 368,736. And the death toll has been averaging in the United States 4,000 per day. And that's across the nation. And everywhere in the nation, they're seeing rising cases of COVID-19. And we have a U.K. Um, strand that is now in Colorado and New York. Don't know where else this case is, but it's crazy. And... Of course, we have no national strategy, but in other countries, you see there's some rising cases. I'm not going to name all of them. Just wait until my page to freshen up with these COVID cases because it's absolutely crazy. Okay, India has 10, 10 million point four. Brazil has 8,013,708. Russia has 3.3 .3 million. The UK, which we have the UK strand here, they're at 2.9. France is at 2.8. Turkey's at 2.3. Um, Italy's at 2.2. Spain has about 2,050,000. Yes, the Christmas numbers are starting to come in. And there's New Year's numbers too. So, we're going to see a, 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 a high surge in cases and a high surge in, in, in the death toll here in the U.S. Um, Germany is at 1.8. Colombia is at 1.7. Argentina is at 1.7. Mexico is at 1.5. Poland, which is shocker, is at 1.3. Iran is at 1.2. South Africa is at 1.1. Almost nearly 1.2. Ukraine's at 1,939,800. Peru just hit the millions. And the Netherlands are, are a trajectory in, I think, um, Indonesia. And then in the in the West Indies, well, in the Hispanic um, countries, I believe Dominican Republic or Panama has high cases. Okay, so Panama... Panama almost have 300,000. They have 273,037. And then you have um, Ecuador at 219,148. Yes. Wow. I, I, I heard, we have over, we have, I think we got like almost nearly 1.1 in New York. But I'm about to get to New York numbers next. Just want to do some parts of the world. Because they and then you got Dominican Republic at one hundred and seventy eight thousand five hundred and thirty eight, and I spoke to somebody in DR, and um, well, actually, someone who has family in DR, her grandparents, and three out of her four grandparents have died, and I think one of her her relatives has um COVID, 
So we need to be conscientious of our black and brown brothers and sisters, our Dominican brothers and sisters, you know, our black brothers and sisters, our Hispanic brothers and well, black, our black and brown people. Let's just put that all in one form. And then in the West Indies, it's crazy too. Um, I think Jamaica has 13,000 and Haiti has about, no, Belize is a shocker. Belize has more than Haiti. Belize has 11,002, 102, and Haiti has 10,000. So you have all these places going up. And in my brother-in-law's home country, because he's from Grenada, Grenada has 127. And they, in the summertime, used to have 120. No, they had 23 only, flat out. And Dominica only had 24. Now you see Dominica at 106 and Grenada at 127. That's because they opened up the islands because they were suffering with money. So that's what happens. You open up your country. But let's get to the states. According to my New York Times COVID map. So, here we are. California has 2,632,221 cases. Texas, 1,935,863. Florida, 1,449,244. New York, 1,101,702. Illinois, 1,019,681. Ohio, 762,063. Ohio, no, I said Ohio. Georgia, 712,785. Pennsylvania, 709,000. 235. Tennessee, 627,776. And North Carolina rounds up that top 10 with 605,187. But then you got places like New Jersey seeing almost 600,000. And um, who else? South Carolina has 344,176. And South Carolina is not even that big. North Georgia is not that big, and Georgia got like over 700,000. I mean, look who's their governor. And North Dakota, I mean, South Dakota is at 102,000. Kansas is real bad. It's real bad in Utah, 301,110. Oklahoma, 320,586. Alabama has 294,287. Wisconsin is 544,618. So all of these states, including where I live in New York, has a lot of cases. Everywhere there's a surge. Everywhere. And we have no leadership. Our leadership is absent. And he has, I think, 11 more days. As of tonight, he has 11 more days. And... We have a new UK strand, which is worse than the first wave of the pandemic, which hit New York really bad when people were watching the news and watching my governor every day. And people think, yes, and every governor is not perfect. My governor is not perfect. There's times I like him. There's times I don't. But during COVID, when, no, when every time when it's a natural disaster, that man is present. And that's because he was a HUD secretary way back in the day during the Clinton administration. That's why he knows how to handle bad situations when it comes to like natural disasters. We, we had Hurricane Sandy. He was there during Hurricane Sandy. He did more than Michael Bloomberg. But um, Donald Trump was not... He's not present and he doesn't care. And the sad part is during the first wave of the pandemic when New York had it the worst, his home borough of Queens had it bad. And he wasn't present 
He didn't even show up and check on people like normal presidents do. Nine eleven happened, and as much as I didn't like George Bush, he came up to New York, and with all that smoke and everything, he came up and spoke to the first responders and the firefighters that were helping, pulling out other of their um, colleagues out from the rubbles of the building. We have COVID-19, Queens get hit the hardest. And this particular neighborhood in Queens, which Donald Trump is actually from. Don't make no trip. Don't care. But my governor had to go to D.C. to ask you for $61 billion of our money. And still, we're 10 months in, exactly, with no national strategy. We always hated Donald Trump. Donald Trump has done so much stuff to New Yorkers and people and excuse me and people from New Jersey. Donald Trump has done so much stuff for people and from two two people from New York and New Jersey and even Southern Connecticut, okay? Donald Trump is very lucky to have life preservation on this planet. Now, why I'm saying that? Because Donald Trump has conned a lot of, be of people from different businesses, um, just regular schmegular degular people. And he scared my family. So I hate the man. I mean, I never liked the man when I was a kid because I grew up here, born and raised, born in the 80s where he was at his worst, in my opinion. And um, he was always a slime ball. So, yeah. But um, we have no national strategy and we're not going to. And I lost, been lost hope on that since um, November, since the second wave. And um, I'm just waiting for the Biden and Harris administration to be, in, to be inaugurated so they can get started with solving the COVID issue. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. And with the Biden and Harris administration and with a new... Democrat majority now in the Senate, which is only two more senators than the Republican senators. We're actually going to see some damn COVID relief being passed. And so people can actually have money in their bank account. And I hope that this stimulus check is a monthly check because it's going to take the whole, mostly the whole Biden and Harris, um, term to solve the COVID problem. We're going to have a national lockdown. I know that's coming. No one had to tell me that twice, which four to six weeks in the house during the winter time, especially winter here in New York is fierce, cold outside. I'm not worried about the snow too much here in New York. I'm more so worried about the cold because that cold air is bad. Especially when it's under 32 degrees here. Oh my God, it's terrible. But I don't mind that. Go get coffee, take my ass back in the house. So national lockdown, needed. Three um, month mask mandate, as Joe Biden said. Of course, I'm down with that. I wear two masks per day now. Especially when I'm going a longer distance. And the retro, um, I think it might be retroactive. But Americans need that stimulus money. They been need that stimulus money. They needed that since the start of this pandemic. And Republicans refused to extend unemployment benefits, including that $600, 
given another round of stimulus money. They have gave little half bit of stimulus money, but that ain't shit. That's chunk change. What you going to do with $600 when you have more than three kids? Or when you're a single person by yourself trying to make ends meet? I would like to know that. But of course, they don't know. They're millionaires serving in the center. Which brings me to this whole attack on our democracy. Wednesday, January 6th was supposed to be the certification of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris being president and vice president elect. A joint session between both the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. And of course, there was some arguing. There was, you know, some objections. But Donald Trump, excuse me, urges people to pretty much um, riot, trespass, to pressure Congress to, quote unquote, stop the steal. The steal of what? What was stolen? This election was safe and secure. Even a Trump official that was in charge of election cybersecurity said so. This election was more a referendum on Donald Trump than the Republican Party because Republicans actually picked up more seats in Congress than Democrats. People thought the Republican Party was worth saving. Just not with Donald Trump. Do I agree with that um, analysis? No. I think the other way around, of course. But that was the outcome of the election. 74 million people voted for Donald Trump. 81 million people voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So with the 81 million people voting for both Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, that election was fraudulent? No. I was one of the 81 million people that voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I did early voting in my, um, my state because it was only for a week. And I actually like early voting. But um, it wasn't it wasn't no no fraud in this election, so I don't know where this BS comes from. But of course, this is Donald John Trump, the well known New York con artist. That's what I always call him, the New York con artist, because he is from Queens. It's so sad because there's some good people I know from Queens. My aunt is from Queens. Well, my cousins are from Queens. But um, those 74 million deplorable people, a percentage, invaded the halls of um, the Capitol building and basically almost tried to attack our congressional representation in this country that they and their staffers had to hide. Shelter in place for hours because of this bullshit. And the worst of it all, the Capitol Police let them come in because they were white. Took selfies with them. Knowing that they carried Confederate flags, American flags, and weapons.
So I just have a question for these um, Republicans who saw this shit happen. Do you denounce these motherfuckers? Because obviously y'all don't. I think um, Congressman Mo, booked, Mo Brooks from, yeah, that's right. Mo Brooks from um, Alabama said it was Antifa. What? No. It wasn't Antifa. It was white supremacists, domestic terrorists, because that's what they were. They were trying to hurt our congressional rep um, representatives. They were trying to get access to hurt our House Speaker, who was 80 years old. What are you doing? What are you accomplishing? Donald Trump lost this election fair and square. Like he won, quote unquote, fair and square in 2016, which we all know that election was rigged. This election, like I said, was not rigged. It was a referendum on him to get his ass out of here and help save the Republican Party, which there is no saving. Because obviously, Josh Hawley is down with this shit and not denouncing this shit, none whatsoever. I know the DOJ said it wasn't Antifa. Nor the FBI, probably. But with Joshua David Hawley, because I want to keep that, that name out there, the junior senator of Missouri, who found it okay to raise his fist outside of the Capitol and standing in solidarity with these domestic terrorists who are white supremacists. All because of his mouth and Raphael Edward Cruz's mouth saying that this election was stolen from Donald Trump. I am concerned about the 74 million people that voted for Donald Trump. The white supremacists that voted for Donald Trump. The complicit white women. Yeah, that 55% I still, I'm, I'm, I'm still salty, but not surprised that voted for a whole entire racist, demagogue, misogynistic bastard. And for Raphael Edward Cruz to still serve in the Senate, the most miserable person next to the new miserable, miserable person Joshua David Hawley. I'm not surprised they stirred it. I mean, stirred this shit up. I'm twisting all my words because I'm mad. Stir this shit up. Because they're the both, both of them are the most miserable son of a bitches in the Senate. That's right. Joshua David Hawley, Raphael Edward Cruz are the most miserable men Serving in Congress, especially the Senate. And um, because of this um, incident and afterwards, Joshua David Hawley still voted him and Raphael Edward Cruz, along with Sydney, Sydney High Smith and several other um, congressional, um, I mean, Senate GOP folks voted to object and overturn the results in Pennsylvania. Joshua David Hawley was basically canceled and fired from his um, contract. So I have a tweet and I'm going to read it because I think this is interesting.
Wait, I have to find his um his stuff. Okay, I have a lot of tweets. Joshua David Harley. I try to find his tweet and I can't find it. But pretty much he blamed the left. He blamed the left for um He probably did. Who knows? I I can't find it. Maybe it's my eyes or anything. I've been staring at screens and shit all day. But um He basically is trying to sue them. The publishing company, because he need he wanted to publish his book. Oh, they say a black woman cancel his book, <laughs> but um, Joshua David Hawley was canceled from his contract because of this incident, and then he's not backing down, and then he said he was defending his um constituents. Who felt like, you know, they were forgotten about in his election. Some bullshit. Pretty much, he was for this shit. And he even fundraised off this shit. That's how crazy it was. So I'm glad Joshua David Hawley was canceled. But today on The View, while working from home, Meghan McCain decided to defend Joshua David Hawley and pretty much told um Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut um said would you work with um him um even though with this happening because if you know if you can't work with him then you should not serve in the Senate excuse me What? So you're telling a competent U.S. senator that's been serving much longer than Joshua David Hawley that if he and other Democratic senators can't work with him, they should not be in the Senate. Like, who in the hell are you to even say that to anybody? You never held a political position. Only thing it's political about you is that you um, served in your father's campaign, you worked for your father's campaign, his failed campaigns, and you are a political commentator on TV. Joshua David Hawley is not even experienced in the Senate. I, I don't even know what bills he passed besides being a hellraiser and being a miserable, evil son of a bitch on the Senate. Judiciary Committee, to be exact. Yeah, she is a mad-ass Megan, and she, she needs to be on another network because, obviously, The View has different viewpoints, and I get it, but she's the most, like, like just self-centered Republican. And the fact that she wants Holly and Tulsi to run the most two bigoted people tells what her views stand by. So the notion that she thinks is okay to have a Josh Holly still in the Senate after all this shit that he created after our democracy was under assault and not backing down and um, then getting upset because he has been canceled and she's upset because he got canceled and telling a sitting U.S. senator um, on the opposing side that he needs to work with him, him and other Democrats 
or they should not serve has a lot of nerve. Coming from someone that never served in office, I think she should keep her mouth closed. That's all I'm saying on that. But with all of these GOP senators having a change of heart and all these people resigning from the Trump administration because they don't want to be associated with him, all of a sudden, y'all want to resign because y'all don't want to be associated with that. Where was this energy back in 2018 when kids were locked? Well, no, I should say when kids were snatched from their parents when their parents um, approached the border. Separating children from their families. Where were y'all? Couple months prior to that, where were y'all when Donald Trump called people who came from Haiti and African nations shithole countries? They come from shithole countries. That's what he said. Oh, and I got even something better. Where were y'all when he said that there were fine people, including white supremacists, on both sides? And that was in the first year of his term. And I'm talking about Elaine Chow, Betsy DeVos, Mick Mulvaney, um, the deputy, uh, what is it? National security advisor and all other, um, staffers in the Trump administration who, um, resigned. Where was that energy since? Where was that energy to check him or to leave back in 2018 and a year prior, 2017, where was that energy? Cause it sure was not there. And y'all was quiet as a church mouse. Now all of a sudden, when this shit happened and, and the cap and the Capitol building's under attack, y'all want to motherfucking leave. Bitch, please. Y'all full of shit. Y'all no heroes. Because if y'all really stood for something, you wouldn't left the moment he said that shit. Or better yet, you wouldn't even serve in this administration. Knowing the type of man he was and how he was going to be when he assumed that position in office. I wish people would just would have voted for Hillary Clinton. And I'm sorry to say that, but I, I do. Because he wouldn't have had this problem. Our democracy would not been under assault. A pandemic would not even happen. And the rats abandoning the ship, like honestly, I still don't give them no credit. They should never, like I said yesterday, they should never, ever, 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 ever serve in any administration, no matter if it's Republican, Democrat, Independent, they shouldn't serve in no government position because they were so complicit with this one. Anyone who worked for this administration, it doesn't end up well for them. Look at um Sean Spicer. He was on Dancing with the Stars and now he's a, a White House correspondent with Newsmax. What a downgrade. That was a downgrade. Look at Anthony Scaramucci. He's a sometime -y commentator on different networks. All these people that used to work for Donald Trump and got fired, where are they? Nowhere. Because their reputation is tarnished as a motherfucker. And that's the truth. That's the gospel truth. But I pray in this new Senate, because who's going to be the majority leader is my senator. 
And everybody's like, oh, we want a um, different majority leader. So who was y'all deciding on? Because if y'all decided on Bernie Sanders, he's not even a Democrat. So that option is out, tossed out the window. Elizabeth Warren is already in Senate leadership. If y'all do the research, she is the vice chairperson of the Senate Democrat Caucus. Along with um, Mark Warner from Virginia, the senator from Virginia, they're head of the um, Senate Democratic Caucus. And Sheldon Whitehouse may be the um, the Senate Judiciary Chairman, so he not gonna have time because we need him on the judiciary thing. And some people don't like Schumer because he's not strong and he's not this and he's not that. Even though he does fight for the state, he does that. But um, you got to have someone to hold this caucus together. Who will embrace not just the quote-unquote progressives because they don't even make up a lot of the, um, the electric they say they do, but they don't. Black people do. Um, the moderates, the centrists, and even the one lone conservative Democrat, Joe Manchin, which he needs to get on board and stop acting like he 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 Frankenstein and shit. Durbin is the minority whip. Well, he's going to be the majority whip. He's already in Senate leadership. But the Democratic caucus seem like they're more in the Senate. They seem like they're more um, in sync than the House. The House is a whole nother different level. And that's because you got the five disgruntled moderates who want to be majority leader, but they know that they don't have a record to stand on. So, and with Manchin, yeah. I mean, I'm not a fan of him. There's a couple other Democrats I'm not a fan of in the Senate, but I take Schuma over Elizabeth Warren any day of the week. And that's the truth. And like I said, you need someone that can hold the party together. Because they all support each other. But that's just my take. Everybody else got a different thing. But you need someone that has... um, And that, yeah, it's going to be done. Whoever is the Democratic majority leader, most likely it's going to be Chuck Schumer because they're going to vote for him. That's going to happen. Um, statehood is going to happen with D.C. and Puerto Rico. You got to mention Puerto Rico in there. Puerto Rico is important. Because Puerto Ricans... They are part of our, our, our country. Don't leave them out. But, um, yeah, it's, 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 well, they, they, they're going to put Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico's been up for statehood for a while, them in D.C., because that's going to happen. Cause you also got Puerto Ricans that serve in the in 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 the house, especially from New York. You have um, one of them is from Queens. Then you got, of course, Alexandra Casio Cortez, and then you got um, Richie Torres, who is half Puerto Rican and and I think half black or just full blown Puerto Rican, and you have. Um, Well, that's true about them, too. And then you have the lone Dominican in there, Adriano Espiat. Because he's the lone Dominican in the Senate. So you got, like, a good range of, like, near Ricans and some near Inicans, as I don't know how you say for New York Dominicans. But I don't know. But 
I hope it's not Bernie Sanders to be the majority leader because he can't he can't even hold his campaign together because his campaign surrogates were out of control. So imagine him holding a, a caucus together. You got to have someone strong to hold the caucus together. Read the top of it. But I'm going to end this. I'm tired. I had a very long day. And um, I need to get ready tomorrow because I got stuff to do because I couldn't do some of it today. But um, take care of yourselves. Stay COVID free. Oh, somebody said Ed Pilar. Oh, okay. So you have a good night. Stay safe. Take care.